So here's what I did actually to use the FSX file system, the Windows file system. Using my own account, I went ahead into the directory service and I created a brand new managed active directory. And basically it takes about, it took me about a half an hour, but I went through the motions, of, not the motions, I went through the actual steps of creating the directory and gave it, you know, gave it, this is my DNS name, theron.example.com. Um, it'll go ahead and actually create the uh, security groups for you. Um, and basically it was just a bare bones minimum one. It was a, uh, you know, just a plain old standard edition because it's like 12 cents an hour, things of that nature. Um, as far as like the security goes, like I say, everything in here was using the complete defaults just to get something up there because you need to have Active Directory, whether it's on-prem or you need to have, whether it's in the cloud in order to use FSX, because when you specify FSX, you're actually going to share or join the domain, I should say. So before I show you that, I actually have a file system created. I'm gonna go ahead and launch another Windows instance just to prove that two instances can share the same file system. So what I actually have here is a remote desktop, which is using my FSX shared drive. I went ahead and mapped um, uh, basically a folder in the EC2 instance to my S drive. And the S drive is the share which points to my file system, the FSX file system under the, uh, you know, under this domain right here. So I'm gonna actually create, now I've actually in here, I've just got a folder, I've got like a, a test a folder, I've got a file that I've created right inside of here. Um, I'll just go and kick off another instance. It's gonna be a Windows 2016, doesn't really matter. And I'm gonna use the free tier one right here. So I'm just gonna select this one, bare bones. I'm just gonna create a free tier micro. It's gonna be very small um, on purpose, but here's a key. Um, when you're creating on step three for the instance details, you need to join your directory right here so that when your instance is launched and you sign in, it's automatically gonna join the domain, the active directory right there. The role itself, uh, I created this, it's called Theron's EC2 domain join, and I'll go ahead and uh, basically show you what that looks like. I'm just gonna create all the defaults here, very small, and it just needs to, I'm gonna go ahead and select the existing Let's see here, security group. I think it was called right here for, I actually need to take a look and see what I have on the other uh, instance. So bear with me one second right here. If I take a look right here, this is going to be, oh, well, see, like I said, it's launch wizard too. So I am really using the defaults. So let's just use launch wizard two. This is just for demo. I would normally call it something else that actually has a meaning for it. So it just basically opens up the RDP port 22. Let's just go ahead and launch. I'm gonna go ahead and use uh, an existing key pair that I have, which I was doing some testing with CloudWatch. And as you can see right there, it was configuring the join domain there. It said it was successful. So we'll go ahead and wait for this instance to fire up before I go ahead and launch and in, log into it. While that's running, let me just show you the FSX part right here. This takes a while to create too. So that's why, I mean, this literally took me about a half an hour as well. So from the time it took to create a managed AD using the bare bones standard, to the time it also cr took to create this um, FSX file system, it, close to an hour. Um, again, here, I'm not gonna go ahead and create another one because I already created one. I used a single AZ2 deployment type. 
the smallest amount of storage capacity and throughput capacity. Um, as you can see, I called it Theron test uh, right up here. The default VPC, here's the address, the DNS name, we'll need that when we do a map. Um, just use the default subnet. So I found the first available subnet right there too. Let me see here, click on the monitoring. As you can see, there's nothing going on here, except for just a little bit, a little bit of IOPS, because when I was creating some files in there, we're not gonna do any backups here. Don't really care about that for now. This is just to show that we can connect two separate EC2 instances to the uh, cloud here and have them both access this file system share. So let's wait for this second instance to boot up, basically, and I will go ahead and pause the video. When this comes up, I will actually remote into it and do the uh, map network drive and show you what happens there. So I'm gonna pause the video. Now, as you can see, I'm firing up the new instance right here. First time I logged in, it is joining the domain. Here's my other instance that's already connected back here that I've already successfully mapped my drive to. And this one's firing up. So I am going to, again, pause this video and wait for this to come up. So let me just go into my back here in my first instance. I'm still waiting for the second one to start up. I'm just creating some test files. This is a test prod config file. Let me just move this over here. Go ahead and write this. Take this, let's just copy it. Move it back up to, that was my test. And I'll just call this like, who knows, dev. And we'll just call this dev config. Okay, so we've got some files out there. So we have a prod folder, we have a test folder. This is just doesn't really matter what's in here, just for the sake of being able to see what we've got going on in here. And I'm still waiting for this EC2 instance here to start up. It's very slow. Again, I'm using all the defaults. Uh, very, It's a small T2 micro, so it's gonna take a while to load up. Okay, so here's the instance. It took a while. I think in the next demo, I'm probably going to go ahead and just kick off a much larger instance because this one was kind of painful to kick off. So I'm trying to bring up the file explorer and as you can see, still waiting for it to come up. So it's just taken forever to boot up. Gonna pause this video and wait to get some response here so you don't have to sit here and watch. Okay, finally, this came up. So now I'm trying to click on this file explorer. Don't try this at home. Don't try spinning off these weak instances, these very small ones here, because they do take a while to load up. Let's see what we got here. I'll say no to this right now. Give it a second. I apologize for the slow time here. As you can see, I'm just trying to go to go on the cheap, which if you pay for your own account, you would pretty much do the same thing. So let's just wait. So here's the one that we actually have, um, oops. Here's the one that I actually have mapped. 
And here's the one that I'm trying to map. So what I'm gonna do is go to this PC. Here's our new instance, and I am going to map the network drive. Well, first of all, let me uh, just show you that I don't have any current drives mapped. Oh my goodness. There you go. As you can see, we just have a C drive. So we are going to map a network drive. As a matter of fact, I'll just call it like, we'll just call it O drive. It doesn't matter. Now, what I really want to do is I want to go back to my FSX instance. And what I need to grab the DNS name for this. So if I go ahead and let's see where we've got this, it's right here. Here's your DNS name, this is what you need. So let's go back inside of here where wrong instance, it's this one right here. I'm gonna take that DNS name and add a UNC slash slash in front of it and then slash share after that and then do a finish and give it a second here. It's still trying to boot up, I believe, to the domain. Hold on one second. Okay, so what I ended up doing since that other micro that I kicked off instance was just running way too slow and just taking forever to join the domain, I just went ahead and spun up a totally different instance. This one was a, a T2 medium. Sorry about that. Um, from now on, I guess I'll spend the extra money and actually fire off a medium uh, or a larger one. But as you can see here, I'm going to use, uh, it doesn't matter what drive it is, I'm going to uh, do Q drive, for example. And I took that domain for the uh, FSX right here, the DNS name right here, and pasted it inside of here and attached a slash share to it. And as you can see, uh, it, that's working just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and give it the uh, domain name here, uh, the credentials for the Active Directory. Now, typically in a real world situation, um, this would probably be your real login ID or something of that nature. Oops, didn't type that in correctly. As you can see, I just typed it in. Uh, Okay, and here we've got our share being connected. So what we have now is, let's see if we can see the files. So we've got our micro instance right here, and then we've got a regular instance right here. And as you can see, we are successfully sharing files. We, we, both of the instances can actually see the same drive. So that was the readme Theron file, which we've got right in here. And on this one, as you can see here, I can click on test. There we go here. I can go into here and just create a brand new file. Creates a copy. And then if I go here to this one, as you can see, it's the same. So I hope this convinces you. So we actually have two instances right now. Uh, we have you know, this medium one here in the micro and they are both able to share files, the fi file system using Amazon FSX, which I've created right here. And it's important that you create an Active Directory service or realistically in your own company, you would just connect to your uh, regular Active Directory over the network if you're not using AWS or something of that nature. But, I think that is the end of this demo. And what I'm gonna do is actually just delete the file system, the FSX share, tear down my two instances, and then delete the Active Directory so that I don't incur more charges. So thank you for watching and have a great one. Bye-bye.